What's up everybody, Superbrooks fan here, and today I want to compare the Challenger Scat Pack that I'm driving here with my Mustang GT, and also with the Camaro a little bit as well. Um, so, you know, now I've driven all three muscle cars in their V8 configurations here, and um, this Challenger is a really fun thing, and of course you can go watch my full review on the Challenger to hear all my thoughts on the Challenger. This video is going to focus primarily on how it compares to my Mustang, you know, things that I've noticed here in the week of driving the Challenger that are different from the Mustang. And the first is the size. Um, you know, the Mustang is not a small car. It's a pretty big, fairly heavy car, you know, 3,800 pounds or so in GT trim. Um, and uh, it's it's kind of funny how this feels so much bigger. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it's it definitely it feels heavier as well because this is like, I think, 4,200 pounds. So you're looking at probably a full 400 pounds heavier than, uh, you know, a Mustang in comparable trim. And um, so, but it's surprising that despite that, this actually doesn't handle much worse than a standard Mustang GT without the performance package. Now, if you do the performance package, it's game over. The Mustang will just run laps around the Challenger. But, you know, without the performance package on the Mustang, like mine has, mine doesn't have the performance package, it actually feels pretty similar in handling to the Challenger here. It's a, definitely a softer muscle car kind of feel to it. And, um, uh, it's it's just you know that old school kind of vibe that it gives off, and I think it's it's actually really fun. Go for a little acceleration here. Yeah, this thing it sounds so good. That's one thing. Uh, stock versus stock, this definitely is louder and sounds better than the Mustang for sure. Um, it's just it's just such an awesome sound. It's got crackles and pops and. Um, it sounds like an aftermarket system, honestly, and that's just Dodge being bold and just saying, hey, we'll give you a loud exhaust system. If you're buying a scat pack, we assume you like sporty you know, performance and you know loud sound, so they just go for it and give it to you, and I think it's great. Um, and th that's one cool thing is, you know, this car does have a really a big 392 V8 Hemi. Um, it's also, it feels like a bigger engine than the little five liter, <laughs> it's funny to say little, but a little five liter V8 that the Mustang has versus Dix. This being you know 6.2, it's just, or 6.4, I should say. Excuse me. It's just you know huge, and um, you know you definitely feel like you have a lot more torque. I think down low in this versus the Mustang, which is you know mostly you know set up with that engine for higher RPMs. I mean, it still does have 400 pound feet of torque in the Mustang, so it's not a slouch. Um, but you know this just definitely seems to have a little more of that low end grunt. This past year, the IIHS actually did uh, a bunch of crash tests on all three muscle cars. And I know that's not something a lot of people think of whenever you're driving a muscle car, you don't care about safety usually. But I mean, accidents happen and it's nice to have peace of mind regardless of what you're driving. And so that's one thing um, with the Challenger where it falls down a little bit compared to the Mustang and the Camaro. Um, because the Camaro and Mustang both did very well in the small overlap crash test versus the Challenger, which um, again, being on that dated architecture from 2010, doesn't have the upgraded uh, you know, bracing and the updates that all the other manufacturers have done with their modern cars to you know, get up to modern safety standards. So I mean, it's not terrible, it's still a pretty safe car, but in a small overlap test, they did say that you know, the dummy's leg um, was severely crushed the bottom half uh, because of you know, the uh, intrusion into the cabin with that kind of an impact. Uh, otherwise, though, it's safe, you know, for all the other kind of impacts and things like that. And the small overlap crash test has always historically been the hardest and the most challenging on a car um, because of the small, uh, you know, space that the impact is spread out over. Uh, but, you know, so that's just another thing, uh, you know, to take in consideration if you are mindful of safety. I would say it's the less, it's the least safe out of all three, but it is the heaviest as well. And sometimes in crashes, weight really does matter. So uh, again, it can go both ways there as far as that whole thing goes. Um, other things to note though, uh, you know, I think that the infotainment here in the Challenger is probably, I would say it's about as good as the Sync 3 system in the Fords. Um, I, I, I think the Camaro, if you're looking at 2016 models, the Camaro has an edge on both because the 2016 Camaro had Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard. Um, the Mustang and the Challenger didn't get that as a standard thing until 2017 model year. So, you know, only something if you're looking at 2016 is but worth noting nonetheless. Um, but this Uconnect screen is really great and, you know, it has all the performance metrics and things like that that all the other muscle cars have and then some. Um, and it is the largest screen, I believe, out of all the uh, muscle cars as well, if that, you know, makes any difference to anyone. The transmission, though, in the Challenger is definitely the best out of, you know, all of the other uh, muscle 
muscle cars. Now, I, of course, have a manual uh, Mustang GT, but I've driven the automatics before, and the six-speed automatic in the Mustang is just a dinosaur compared to this eight-speed. This Torque Flight eight-speed in this car is just so quick to shift manually, it even blows the Camaro's eight-speed out of the water with its shifting times whenever you're using the manual paddles here. Um, you know, and uh, it's otherwise though it's a little jerky sometimes. It's automatic, um, so I would still say you know if you like manuals, definitely stick with the manual. Um, but if you have to have an automatic, this is the best one out of the bunch, I think. While we're talking about the interior of the Challenger here, though, another thing worth mentioning um, is the seats. Now, compared to the Mustang, these seats are definitely a little bit firmer and a little less comfortable. The bolstering is more aggressive in the Challenger, but it's also, it doesn't hug you as well, and, which is a weird conundrum because, you know, they have very large bolsters, but they just start a little bit wider out so that, you know, like I said, it just, it feels a little less tight than the Mustang does, which for larger body types might actually be welcome. For smaller body types, you may actually enjoy the Mustang seats a little bit better in that regard. Um, and these ones are also cloth. I kind of mentioned the whole price difference between all the cars uh, in my review of the Challenger, but to state it again very briefly, you know, this one that I'm driving here is about 41 and change, and for that money, um, you know, you get cloth seats still. Now this one has the optional uh, Uconnect touchscreen put into it, and of course the automatic, which drive the price up a little bit here. But still, um, you know, you're spending basically 40 grand for a car with cloth seats. Now, for people that only care about performance, that's all fine and well, but whenever you also consider you can get a GT premium with the performance package on it or without, either way, for under 40,000 um, bucks, you know, that's where the Mustang, I think, is still the value leader in that regard. Uh, it just can't be beat on price uh, unless you do some, even unless you can get some kind of incentives or something on these that you can't get on the Mustang. Um, but, you know, that's the thing is, you know, the Camaro is, is on the pricier side too, uh, similar to the Challenger here. The Challenger is just, you know, it's got the biggest engine of the bunch, the most power of the bunch, so you're going to pay the most. Uh, so that's why you get less interior for your money, but you're getting this, you know, big engine, additional power, the larger size of the car, and everything else in general. So I don't think the cost is unwarranted, but it just, you know, another difference is the cost, and you get a lot more for your money, I think, with the Mustang. Uh, but, you know, like I said, it just depends. If straight line power and speed is your thing, then, you know, this is definitely, you know, the way to go, I think. Although, you know, you could do some mods to a GT and get it to, you know, similar horsepower numbers for maybe the same amount of money. Who knows? But, uh, you know, just another thing worth mentioning. Also, uh, one last thing to mention is because of the Challenger's size, uh, the fuel economy on it suffers. And I would say it's probably the lowest out of the three, although I haven't had a Camaro SS for an entire week. Um, but, you know, I can imagine that it would probably, you know, being lighter, 400 pounds lighter than the Challenger here, that it would probably get better fuel economy. Uh, and also, it's a little bit of a more advanced engine. It's smaller as well. And so, uh, you know, as far as the Mustang goes, though, I think you could probably easily get 16 even in aggressive driving. And this was giving me 14.3 in my driving, which wasn't super aggressive all the time and was over the course of a week. So, um, you know, and I guess that's, like I said, it's just the having the most power um, and you know the most weight that's just one of the side effects of course is the lower fuel economy so again just something else to consider for those that are you know thinking about something like that you know and taking all the ownership costs into mind but yeah so I mean that's it as far as really all the comparison I suppose I have between the Challenger and the Mustang uh, if there's any further questions you guys have uh, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll try and get to them as best I can um, but yeah I mean it's just it's really fun it's just again the whole whole thing with muscle cars is there's something for everyone you know it just depends on what you like you know if you want a little bit of a smaller car but you like the aggressive looks you can get the Camaro if you want something that's a little less aggressive looking but still just you know an absolute bargain for what you get for the money uh, the Mustang is always a great choice and of course if you just want something extremely retro big the most power uh, you know, the most attitude I think that the uh, Challenger has that in spades so uh, yeah it's just it's a great time to be alive that we have all these three to choose from and they're all really really well on their own and even compared to one another they all have their strengths and their weaknesses and uh, so it's just up to you to decide you know which one you prefer the most so uh, yeah thank you guys very much for watching and uh, let me know your thoughts on all of them and you know which one you would pick out of all the three muscle cars here and I'll see you guys next time take care